Welcome to episode two. I've got my coffee. Yay! My name's Blades. Hiya. Hi there. Um, continuity. Continuity. Yes. Load shader. We're back in shaderfoundation.h and I'm just going to nip that down to a lowercase l. Uh, lowercase c. I'm going to change file name to file path because it isn't the name anymore at that point, it's the uh, path. Uh, anything else I want to change? No, nothing there. Um, explanation of all of these things in the last episode was a bit dodgy. So, all of these here are to deal with uniform locations, and these two here are to deal with the layout. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, it's in the API GLSL. Let's just have a quick look at it. Um, static shader VS will do it. So layout is that lot. Those three. And uniform locations are those ones. I was wondering about text chord being a VEC2. doesn't really matter because we don't have any VEC2s in this lot. It's all VEC3s, which is good. So... Last thing I was wondering was about, should we put 4D and 3D at the end of these? Um, it's personal choice, you can do if you want. There we go. So, three things to a change. Let's pop over. It's already telling us that we've got them to change, so that's good news. At least it's keeping up with us. And that I want as file path with a capital P. It matters to me, not to anybody else. You can leave it alone, it doesn't matter. Where should we start? Well, let's start with low shader. We're here now, so let's start here. Always a good place. Let's start at the beginning. We have our GLSL uh, saved out in the API, as you can see. It's all here, waiting for us. So let's just pop that back up. There we go. That is now waiting for us under the file path, whatever file path we put in there. And so, how are we going to do this? Let's just pull up some notes. There we go. Uh, oh, it's just a straight. It's going to be a straightforward file thingy. Uh, reading a file, isn't it? Line by line. So what we're going to need, we're going to need a couple of variables. And my keyboard's so far away today. STD, colon, colon. Let's have a couple of string variables. Um, first one we're going to call output. Why not? Um, even better if I could spell it right, wouldn't it? You can see that I've only just started typing today. I haven't done any typing yet. And standard string. Let's have a look. We'll call this line because we're going to read it in line by line and then add it to the output or append. I believe they call it in the string world. Let's open ourselves up a file. Um, let's call it std because it's in standard library again. And it's going to be IF stream. Yep, yeah, it's there for us. That's good news. Uh, we're going to just call this, well, file will do. Who cares? Doesn't really matter what we call it. And we are going to do file dot open. Comes up for us nicely. Um, do we need anything else? Well, helps if I use the file path, doesn't it? So let's do that. It's going to be... How do I do this properly so it doesn't mess up? It's a std string and file.open receives a c string or a char star, doesn't it? You're not going to tell me, are you? Oh, 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 oh. Thanks. Open with char t char. Yeah. 
so we're going to have to convert it that's okay uh, we'll take file path and we'll just dot it with a c underscore str style c string and that'll work i'll take it to a char star for us very kindly thank you c <laughs> using a function at c to do c plus plus that really hasn't been thought through has it it really hasn't been thought through oh dear c plus plus and its quirks so if our file dot because we haven't made it a pointer is open yeah that'll do what do we want to do we want to do a while loop while our file hasn't closed or is not corrupted we have a thing for that don't we yeah we can use good yep that's good <laughs> that was nearly a good joke nope so whilst that's all happening uh, what do we want to do we want to get each line so get line and that will be from file and um, please place it in a line do we need to star anything here size t star restrict n file rate yeah right yeah okay doesn't half make it hard does it it really does go into some kind of weird oh oh it's a char star star oh that's fine uh, that means we can use a string, which is a star star jar. There we go. So I'll just put line in there. That's fine. And output. We're going to use a special string function for this. We're going to use append. Append puts, well, just adds things to the end of the uh, the output, really. So it's just going to be our line plus, and this is needed. This really is needed. Forgetting to do this part will mess it all up. It's one of the quirks of OpenGL. At the end of each line, it needs a escape character N for new line. It looks for those when it's compiling. So that's to help the compiler work. Um, not much else really there. Oh, we want an else here though. Else. Um, yeah, let's just. Thank you. Won't go down a line for some reason. <coughs> oh, very strange. Excuse me. <coughs> hmm. I've got some really nice coffee again today, so I'll be all right in a second. Mm. Now, as promised, I was going to use a function that I haven't used before, uh, which is stdc error. This is from IO Stream, and it's a console error message. That's what it means. So, if you have an error window open in your IDE, this will work better for you than it will for me. This will just send it to the console for me. Uh, for you, if you've got an error message uh, output for consoles activated within an IDE, uh, like Visual Studio or Code Blocks, I think uses one. Eclipse might use one. Um, this will go there instead. Just cute. Uh, just keeps it out of the out of the way. Enable. Enable to load. Um, shader. And put a cobalt on, and then we'll just pop in here uh, file path. There we go. And then just add the ending. End line. There we go. That will do it nicely. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, breathing's a little bit better now, and I have to. <laughs> I need two colons there. There we go. Standard end line. Yes, there we go. Let's get to the end of this now. Thank you. Right, that's it done. Yeah, that's the whole thing. There you go. So we've taken output and line, we've opened a file, we've read in line by line and just added it to the end of the output, uh, making sure there's a backslash or sorry, an escape character N um, after each line. So everything goes into one output and we'll return that back. That has now loaded the shader in into um, the variable output in a format that we can use for compilation, compiling. Nice. So that's that one done. Um, don't need anything else there, do I? No. Uh, text, yeah, 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 yeah. I think we're at, no, I'll do uh, create shader next, why not? See what notes I've got on that. I mean, load shaders, very, very simplistic, really. Uh, in C++ wise, it's just give yourselves a couple of variables, uh, open the file, read the file in, and then send the output off to whoever asked for it. <laughs> yeah, just like that. I know we're really going to have to cough properly soon. My apologies, my apologies, it's uh, my ailments, not yours. Uh, create shader. Yeah, I think I can do that. Mm. That is nice coffee. So, this is more my kind of thing, actually, creating shaders. I think I'll be alright with this one. I'm going to start with a GLUint. This is going to be a shader. I'm going to call it shader anyway. And this is going to be an OpenGL command called GL. <laughs> this is a funny one, actually. It's called create shader. Uh, create uh, shader. Sh 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 shader. Thank you. And it's open brackets. And it's a pointer uh, function to a GL uh, create shader procedure. Excellent, that's what that does. And all we need to do is pop, t pop in there the GL enum type, which we've got. Uh, we called it, what, shader type, by any chance? Yeah, we did. Shader type, and that's all we needed that bit for. That's lovely. That works beautifully. I like that line. Now, if by some chance uh, OpenGL isn't available to us, or an error occurs, then shader will be equal to a zero, I guess, won't it? Because it just won't work. And if it doesn't work, it'll just be a zero. We'll type out a standard C error, uh, console error, and that will just be error. Uh, create shader, always tell me where it come from. And that just says that that's kind of failed. Yeah, that'll do. Nothing complicated about these errors. These are just simple pickups for OpenGL not being available or glue being badly initialized or something's not quite right in the background. I don't want the, the program just crashing because that will be bad. Um, yeah, that'll do. Because it'll crash anyway, so yeah. Hmm. No worries, const. We need a constant. What do we need a constant? We need a constant gl char. And that will be a star. Yeah, let's have source. Shader source. 
it's a pointer because it's uh, an array. Um, I do need to know the length of it, don't I? G L int, and this is going to be shader source. No, don't put length. Yeah, I am going to need another. Yes, yeah, um, that's a one as well. We'll just make that into something usable. Um, there's two shaders. That's why. So if I put a one in there, I can use zero and one. I'm guessing, or something strange like that. Um, doesn't matter for a second uh, because I need not to worry about that. I need to put an A in, I'm guessing. That might help. Yeah, that's looking better. Now, the shader source. Uh, we have to use the zeroth position so that it knows when to end. We are going to make that equal to text dot c underscore str c string. Yep, I'm going to convert it into c. <coughs> We're doing that because OpenGL doesn't like C plus plus; it likes C. So we're having to do this conversion. We may as well do it prior to using the um, variable properly. Um, just saves a bit of hassle actually. So shader uh, source length uh, again a zero is going to equal, and we're going to have to use a static cast here because we are going to be converting something. So it's a static cast, and we're casting to an int because that's what our length is in an int. Um, it's not actually, it's in a GL int, which is the same thing, but I'm going to do it properly. So there we go. Uh, GL int, and we are going to have, um, let's see now, it's going to be text dot length. There we go. So we need to know the length of the text. Okay, the text is passed in to us. So what's going to happen up in our in, in our top sh shader foundation part is it's going to be calling the load shader to get this so-called text. And then it's going to be passing the text in here for compilation to create the actual shader. Okay. So we now have shader zero here. Uh, Now we need to get the OpenGL bits done. So GL shader, we have to register it with OpenGL. So GL shader source, we are going to register it with U. Open brackets and we come up with all this a lot, don't we? Okay, the gluint shader will be. Shader. Looking back up, yeah, glue in shader. Yeah, it is shader. What's the next thing it wants? Uh, the size I count or the size of. Um, well, that's the number of the shaders. So it's one. It's only one shader. Uh, now it wants the gl star const star string. Yeah. How awkward can you be open gl at any one time? Luckily we've set that up. And that is just shader source. So that's lovely. Because we put it in such a way that it would do what it asked. Excellent. Uh, what do we need now? Uh, the length, star length, 
star length means we need a pointer and it is a pointer already because it's the name of a an array so it's just shaded source length yeah fantastic we did that well there we go and that's done so we now we've now registered our gl shader source lovely which means we can compile it gl compile shader there we go and it's just you're gonna really like this one shader there you go it becomes that easy if we get it right and now we get to that bit that we haven't written which is check uh, shader error which requires us to give the gluint shader remember we're, we programmed this so we can alter anything we need um, OpenGL will have a GL compile flag this will it will set this when it compiles GL compile um, status it is yeah these are this is an enum by the way if you want to know uh, status that's what the enums look like if you were wondering about that GL enum there shader type it's just going to be GL underscore shader or something like vertex on the shader or whatever it's going to be one of those it's going to be something like that uh, what else do we need bool is a program uh, false no we're not checking for the whole program uh, we're just checking the source the compiled source so that's false and error message is going to be oh, I'll put it on a separate line because I want a bit more space there error Uh, colon gl telling it what's going to give the error compile shader this is for our information if it uh, gooks up or does anything strange uh, put space at the end of that please um, yeah that'll do there we go so we're actually going to check our own errors and of course there aren't going to be any are there <laughs> we hope return shader so once we're finished doing all that we're just going to return it there we go so we do want to really put this in i think now uh, i think it's a good time to do that oh yeah for compiling a shader that's all you do uh, you register the source and then you compile it the compiler is given to us by OpenGL itself. Isn't that nice? I think that's wonderful. There we go. And here we come down to checking shade errors. This is, ugh, this to me is the worst one of all. Um, my notes just, on my notes it just says, erg, <laughs> with a big ex couple of exclamation marks on it. This is what you need to put in here if you want it to work. <laughs> oh dear. It looks awful. Mm. You'll see what I mean in a second. So we're going to have a couple of uh, variables. We'll have an integer. So it's gl int. Uh, this is just going to be success. Success or failure. I suppose it could be a bool. Nah, we'll have an integer. Reasons. There we go. And uh, glchar we'll have. Uh, and this one is going to be uh, error. This is going to store the error. Uh, 1024, why not? Just picking a number out of the air. That's 1k. 1 kilobyte. And that'll do nicely. Equals, well, zero at the moment. Um, doesn't need to equal anything, does it? No, not really. 
we'll set it to zero and uh, get on with it so if and that is a program so we're having to do two checks here because one is for programs and one is for just general compilations um, or compiled, compiled parts as it were so if it's a program we are going to gl get uh, program and it's going to be iv integer variable remember it's a glue int that we're looking see like gl int sorry that we're looking for so it's an integer variable i'll tell you what all this does in a second if i can remember shader comma flag comma yeah it's a real thing folks flag comma and success we need the yeah it's starred yeah so it's in dress thought it was success that'll tell us whether it was a success or not because we don't know so at this point as we are being sent through say from here checking the shader well that could have been successful so what we are going to do we're going to check for errors we're not going to check the error so there may no be they may not be an error so what we're all going to do is ask it if it was successful or not there we go if it wasn't if it isn't a program uh we've got to do it slightly differently uh, we have to go gl and this time it's going to be shader because that's what we use isn't it yeah gl get shader iv iv just stores it's a convenient little switch that gets pulled by opengl automatically that tells us if something was a success or not so it gives it to us we don't have to make it happen it does it itself shader flag and success so it's the same thing twice just using different gl gets I've put those in right, haven't I? Yeah. Okay, suck. Sess. There we go. Lovely. So we just checked whether the program or the shader, remember this said false, so it's a shader. GL shader source, GL compile shader. It says false there, so uh, that is program is false. So it'll do this one, the shader IV which we want it to on the program when we do the full program check it will be true obviously <laughs> uh, that'll come later so if we successfully find an error yes it's the wrong way around blades you've programmed it backwards again no i haven't it's gl faults is success equals gl underscore faults whatever g open gl on your system says an error is i don't know what it's going to be it will register as a gl faults <laughs> so i could have used success as a boolean silly me but i don't know if it'd be accepted into the shader part interesting there you go if is program There we go. Uh, what we're going to do? Uh, whoop, sorry, just hit the microphone. Uh, we need the program information logs, don't we? Um, OpenGL again gives the information for the errors and it stores them automatically for us. So we have to go and get them. So it's get program and it's inf info log yes it's come up info log excellent and this is an awkward one again it's going to be shader comma buffer size uh, uh, size of error yeah may as well be uh, size of error is that right yeah it is that'll give us the right result um what's the next thing it wants length 
Uh, we'll give it a null pointer for that. Because I don't know the length. Yeah, we'll do that. That's okay, that'll work. And we'll need the error as well to store it into. There we go, that's the address. Remember, error is an address. It's actually an address because it's already an array. So that's happy. So that's an address passed in. Excellent. Array names, by the way, are always addresses. Always. 100%. Uh, else, you can see what's going to happen here, can't you? Else, we need to use gl get shader info log, and it's exactly the same, isn't it? Exactly the same. There we go. Done it. Um, now I've gone to all that problem, uh, sorry, trouble, now I've gone to all those, that trouble, we may as well print it out, see error, and it's just going to be error message, whatever we typed in, to begin with, and it's then going to follow up with, um, let's add a colon, why not, because we can, and uh, then we can have error, the error from OpenGL, so we've put our message in, uh, we're now putting OpenGL's error message in, and then we'll just close it all off, std end line, like that, there we go, I think that'll do for errors. I've had enough of them now. Isn't that horrible? Double checking all the way. I don't like that. Mm. Anyway, it just means that it's one check shader and we can have the flag true or false uh, to tell us uh, what's going on really. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, what do we put in for the flag? Oh, compile status, yeah. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's absolutely spot on, yeah. That will work now, yeah. So, we've done them. That's M3 done. And we're on 32 minutes. Hmm, not bad. So, all we need to do now is... Um, the layouts. Uh, the uniforms. How to start and stop. And the actual program <laughs> and any destructors uh, will, that will destroy the programs I'm guessing um, yeah we're okay we're okay with that so next up we're going to do the main part the main program lovely that's spot on I'm going to take a break and I will see you in part three where we will do the shader foundation um, creation uh, what do you call it? Constructor. The, the actual program goes in here. So I can't wait for that. That's going to be fun because we've already got quite a bit of it programmed now. It's uh, going to be all right. And I'll check through this. I'll check through that I've done everything right as well. And I'll tell you if I haven't in the next episode as usual. All right. So uh, you lot take care and of course have fun.